cheating here on campus in the wake of, of course, the Harvard scandal. I don't know if you guys heard about that, but uh, approximately, not approximately, exactly 125 students are involved in the Harvard scandal. Uh, The Harvard Crimson reported that 125 students out of 279 uh, students, I believe these are undergraduate students, who were taking an introductory course to government, and they are now being charged with cheating. Of course, government corruption, cheating, it's all the same thing, right? How could we be surprised? Well, anyway, it is Harvard, and you know you can imagine the pressure on these folks is incredibly high. So at the end of the day, I'm not all that incredibly surprised. It's not necessarily that these guys had some sort of a of a highly complex cheating mechanism that they used in class or beat somebody up in the bathroom for answers. That's not necessarily what happened here. With 125 kids cheating, allegedly, of course, it is the charge of plagiarism, and this happened during a take-home exam. So at best, they were collaborating with each other on this, basically instant messaging each other for answers or for tips on how to start different paragraphs or different ideas they should put in there. Apparently, and obviously, I suppose, you're not allowed to talk to any other students whatsoever. I'm not sure how this actually got out. Did not read the Harvard Crimson article in its totality, but the point is 125 students uh, with Harvard were, are, I guess, being investigated for cheating. So that could be an issue. So USC now, sort of the Ivy League on the West Coast, is taking a look at this, and they're, they're thinking about, well, wait a second, Harvard's got 125 folks involved in cheating in this one scandal. In all, though, in all, here at USC, the University of Southern California, all right, the grand total of reported cases of academic dishonesty for last year, the, the school year of 2011 to 2012, the grand total, how many kids cheated? 291. 209. That is a lot of people, isn't it? That's almost 300 Trojans that are not exactly academically honest. Now, I don't know if all of these were, I mean, they're all reported cases. And I can tell you that, believe it or not, this number probably is deflated because whether they'll admit it or not, there are some professors out there that will, you know, take a look. Uh, They'll find out that a a student might have been bending the rules a bit, and maybe they'll they'll sort of let it slide. They're not many. They're they're few and far between. I know that was more the case in high school or whatever. So, you know, they say keep your eyes on your own paper or whatever, even though the student might steal an answer here or there. So this number's deflated. And also in the fact that a lot of kids, I'm sure, (laughs) although I love the Trojans, USC is the place to be, a lot of kids under a lot of pressure here to do well, unfortunately bend the rules to the point where they might break. And believe it or not, professors in the administration here, they don't find out. I mean, just because you cheat doesn't mean that people are going to find out. Apparently, that that really is the motto, especially for the 125 kids involved in the Harvard scandal. I mean, you try to cheat against Harvard, you better believe that there's going to be an investigation. So hopefully they cover their tracks. Looks like they didn't in that case. But almost 300 kids cheating here at SC uh, for the 2011-2012 school year. It just seems... A little surprising in that regard. So what is USC doing to sort of combat this? Well, the USC Gold School of Law has implemented a software program called Soft Test. And it's nothing but, it's not a soft test. It's a very hard test, I'm sure. But that's what the software is called. And Jane Chang Bright, the Assistant Director of Student Computing Services at the USC Gold School of Law, said that, uh, what did she say here? Quote, the software basically turns your computer into a typewriter, which brings about a secure exam mode. Students can't get to the internet, they can't get to their online notes, they can't open PDFs, and they can't instant message with anybody. So go figure. There's an issue in that regard. My question is, though, why not just have two computers? You know what I mean? Or maybe your phone. That could be a computer. Why not just have one computer taking the test, and you're doing so honestly, and then you got another computer basically copying it off of, or looking at the internet, chatting with your friends, or whatever like that. I mean, frankly, they need to install a camera to make sure that the student doesn't basically shape the environment to his or her advantage. The rule of the uh, of the trade when it comes to students here is if you give them room to cheat, they most likely will. All right? I've taken online tests before. <laughs> Not necessarily for USC, but let's just say, I mean, the temptation... Is there? I mean, you can access the internet or whatever like that. According to this, according to uh, Jane right here with USC Gold, the internet is not accessible and they basically shut down your computer, which I don't know if I really want to do that to my computer per se. Hopefully it's safe. And, you know, once you finally exit and finish your test, hopefully you can open up all these applications because that's exactly what the software is doing. It's disabling everything. So hopefully technologically there isn't an issue with that. Haven't heard anything coming out, but you never know. 
But if you think about it, you really need a camera because if the student can control the environment, the temptation to cheat is, is very, very real. And it's not necessarily cheating. It's more bending the rules a bit. You know what I mean? Like they'll take an unnecessary break or, you know, they'll maybe they'll take a phone call and ask a, a question off a cuff. You, know, you never know what it is. So at the end of the day, it's a wonder to me how take home exams can even can even exist if you think about it, because the students, I mean, it's just all, all their cell phones and all their connections and all their friends. I just, I mean, actually counting on a student to be incredibly honest and, and to just play it by the book is tough, is tough. And apparently 300 students here at SC do not play it by the book. And I, I can promise you there's probably more than that. But at the end of the day, USC students are, I mean, you know, if they bend the rules or whatever, they, 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 USC makes the rules at the end of the day. Think about it. I mean, these guys are world changers. There are a lot of smart people here at SC. So, I mean, degrees are deserved and... You know, I guess if there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> it just depends on which way you take and how much will you have. So anyway, folks, we'll take a short break here on Conrad's Corner. When we return, we will have the interview with Kyle and Luke all about USC football making a difference off the field in Haiti last May. This is Conrad's Corner. It continues after this. <laughs> 